I'm going to use voiceover in this video. The last few times have been subtitled simply because they're just quicker and easier for me to make that way. This is an antique forehand and Wadsworth British Bulldog calibered in 32 Smith & Wesson. Um, that's the short black powder version of the cartridge. It was manufactured sometime in the 1890s and it's still fully functional and I do carry it occasionally but I need a pocket holster for it. I'm just going to do a quick uh, safety check just to verify that it is unloaded. I like to use this craft store foam sheet to develop new patterns with. It simulates the, the leather a little bit better than just paper or cardstock. Trace the gun first. Then followed by the, the outline of how I generally want the, the holster to, to take shape. At this point I have really kind of a a nebulous view of how I want this holster to, to work and this beginning phase here just helps me develop that out before I actually start making cuts onto leather. Just making sure the two sides are symmetrical. I prefer to do what I consider the more difficult cuts first, so I use my semicircular punches for this part. I bought an inexpensive set of these corner cutters off of eBay. For like 10 bucks you get a whole set of various different radiuses. It makes those those rounded corners uh, a lot nicer looking and a lot easier. This holster is going to have a welt on it similar to a, a knife sheath. I'm just taking that measurement here. And it looks like that trigger guard is going to be about three pieces of leather thick. Just marking my groove for the uh, stitch line. This is weld wood contact cement. Get that pretty much at any hardware store. The uh, little bottle I have is pretty old and the glue is getting kind of dried out. But I don't buy the bigger cans of it simply because it goes bad too quick. Just uh, wetting the leather to make it a little bit more malleable here. I'm going to cut off the excess, but I'm going to leave a little bit on there. Just roughening up the top grain of this leather to uh, prepare for the next layer of glue. As I glue the next layer on, uh, my main concern is to make sure the inside surface of that welt stays square.
so the welt is three layers of leather thick, but that last layer is going to actually be the, the top side of the back of the holster. And that I want to carry across the, the body of the holster so that I get two layers of thicknesses uh, on that bag. That'll give me the rigidity that I need. Unfortunately, because of that, I can't just cut a strip and glue it on like I did the first two. Um, and I'm just using this tile profiler um, to, to get the shape of the, the welt on the inside. It'll make sense here in a second. This is a rubber cement eraser. Um, it's a pretty old one, but it, this works great for taking off excess contact cement from your leather. Again, here, just making sure that the inside of that belt is square. It's going to be impossible to do it once it's all put together. I believe this is a number two edge beveler. It's pretty much the only one I use. Sorry, I didn't get a picture of me dying it black, but suffice to say, I dyed it black. This is just the neat spot off. When purchasing felt, I'm usually looking for anything that's labeled premium or if I can find it 100% wool. I basically just avoid anything that says crack felt. It's usually really thin, not very durable, and not very uh, consistent in its thickness. No tooling on this holster, but I am going to put this little pinstripe there just for a little bit of flair. I want to ensure that the felt doesn't detach from the inside of that welt. It is a high contact area, so I'm just stitching into that corner there. I decided to go ahead and put a toe plug in this.
felt is easy to work with, but it literally is a dust magnet. I don't need a strong glue here. I just need it to hold long enough to sew it together. So at this point, the holster is about three quarters of an inch thick of leather and glue and felt, and we are at the max capacity of the Tittman Boss. Um, you can see that uh, presser foot doesn't have a lot of travel on the uh, on the upstroke, but as you can see, it's it's handling that just fine. Uh, just want to say here, make sure that your sander is always square and that you are wearing proper dust mask. This is why I leave that little bit extra hanging off the welt. I've mentioned this before in my previous videos, but I don't use edge paint. I just don't like the way it looks. I prefer to use the same dye that I use to dye the rest of the holster with. So since the toe plug is so small, I'm going to see if I can get away with just gluing it in instead of stitching. Um, I'll let you know how well that holds up. So since I have a little bit of protected area down here in the corner of the holster, I decided to try to squeeze in a little bit of storage for some ammo. I figure you never know. If zombies attack, those last couple of little bullets might make all the difference.
And there you have it. The holster gives just enough retention to keep the gun in place, and the felt lining makes it just easy enough to unholster it in my pocket. Uh, as a side note, I never make any claims on felt about it protecting any finish. That's not what it's about. In fact, it won't. Um, for me, the felt lining is purely to make holstering and unholstering quicker and easier.